I built a tiki bar in my backyard. In this video, I'm gonna give you a tour of the breezeway, and if you stay to the very end, I'll even show you the volcano pond that I built. Let's go. So about two years ago, I put out the first breezeway tour video. At the time, we were just in quarantine, so it was like looking for things to do. And then that turned into the breezeway cocktail hour, and then there was a catastrophic disaster that happened to the breezeway. Part of the roof caved in. So eventually we got to the point where we were like, we should just rebuild the whole damn thing. So we got started and it was a mess. Look at that. Oh man. And then we got to building and after a bunch of carving and burning and all kinds of stuff, my buddy Josh and I started erecting the new breezeway hut, pounding in the uh, top piece there. It was a lot of work. And that's what takes us to today. I guess the first stuff that we really need to look at is this stuff. So these are Chinese jade tiles. It was a mess getting them. The person who was selling them was like kind of scammy. She sent them in a thin, thin box. Five of the six arrived crushed, total mess. So my friend Desi was able to find some more, was able to use two of the same, one different one in the middle. And then the idea with the treatment down here, the vertical and horizontal bamboo, as well as the jade tiles, were a bit of a nod to the original Don the Beachcomber at McCadden Place in Hollywood. So that was the theming on the outside, all of the wood carving I did myself, all of the construction was my buddy Josh and I. I always wanted a tiki bar that had the, the lighted fish float out front. And now here we are. I do have to say it is pretty striking if you see it at night, especially with that big long prow reaching up into the sky, just like a traditional tiki bar from like the 1950s or 60s. And the way that we figured out how high we could go before my neighbors would be like, uh, what's that? We held like a long, long piece of bamboo up and then I ran across the street on our cell phones. I was like, okay, Josh, a uh, little higher, a little right there, okay. And then I had to run back and we had to measure it real quick. So that's how we did that. But it's, uh, it's higher than you think. Or maybe you think it's high, I don't know. It's high. Okay, so as we go inside, I'm gonna try and be kind of vloggy about it. I did that last week when we were talking about the white grapefruit tree over there. People seem to enjoy that, so let's try that again. Come on, okay. And here we are. So I was working on this up until the moment of filming. I wanted to repaint the floors in there, but I kind of didn't know how to go about like ending it. And so there was a crack that just ran along here. And so I just followed this crack and uh, it's been raining all day. So it's been a bit of a challenge, but it's all right. All right, so we're gonna start right here. That is a vintage Japanese glass fish float sitting up there at the very top and the breezeway sign that I carved years ago. And those decorative elements right there came from an image that I found in the Oceanic Arts book. I forget which apartment complex used the same style, but I love that and I, uh, I added it to the design. And as we come into the breezeway here, there is the fountain with the spitting guy. I hung this Chinese lantern just a little bit ago. If you've been paying attention to the Oceanic Arts auctions that were going on, this is one of the items that I got from Oceanic Arts, carved by Leroy Schmaltz. It included that full bamboo setup. Yeah, super cool stuff. And then up there on top is a, a skull from Taboo & Co. They sent it to me to display in the breezeway. You can also light those things up. As we come in through the front door, you can see there's this fish float and there is the ceiling. Quite a difference from the video that I made about two years ago. We spent so much time building the structure and now that it's done, it's like, it's so nice to be able to hang out in this place. We left a spot up above clear so that it's not super dark in here during the day. I recently had an estate sale where they had five vintage puffer fish for sale. And so these are those puffer fish. I still need to light that guy up, but this guy is lit up and this guy over here is lit up. And of course this is like, you know, this is the main bar of the breezeway. This is what you guys see every week on the show, kind of from a different vantage point. If you're wondering, this box that kind of goes around the whole perimeter of the place, is what contains the gutter system off of the other roof. So ideally, the rain drops off of the hut roof and then it goes down to the main roof, like the garage roof over there, and then that should run into the gutters, but I'm still working on that whole, <laughs> that whole scientific project. My buddy Matt Reese, who's a tiki artist, gave me this bunch of hanging coconuts. 
And these are the kinds of things that add to the whole authentic tiki decor aesthetic. Things like hanging coconuts and pufferfish lamps and these hanging buoys. This is a big fish trap lamp that I got from Sam's Seafood or uh, Don the Beachcomber as it was most recently called. It was one of the things that was for sale there at the closing sale. I can't believe that I ended up with such a gigantic fish trap lamp. Pretty rad. It's all the little things that make tiki bars so authentic. Now, once you come inside and you turn around, there's this beautiful Whitco planter that hangs. I got that on Craigslist for, God, almost nothing. It's just, I haven't had that kind of deal in a long time. There's a drum light up there from Don the Beachcomber in Sunset Beach. Another puffer fish and some more fish, giant fish floats. That one also, I drilled a hole for a bulb, so eventually that's gonna be lit up. Some other really cool nautical lamps hanging. Just uh, a couple of really good estate sales, and that's how I ended up with those things. Friend of mine got me that Chinese screen that kind of blocks out the reality of inside. And then hanging on that screen is a piece by Leroy Schmaltz that was uh, traded to me by Justin Scard of Random Land fame. And then down here, I hung the bell from our music video of uh, The Enchanted Sea, which of course, if you're not familiar, my band, The Hula Girls, did a, a music video at the beginning of quarantine. It's a Martin Denny song. So that's the bell from the music video. And then right there is the uh, doggy door. I built for Astro and then sadly my dog passed away. So now Sparky uses it. There he is, hi buddy. So once I taught Sparky how to use that, it became super, super normal for him to do it. See the other big changes in here. I just try to hang a lot of like fake foliage, netting, ropes, things like that in order to to enhance the illusion of us being in some kind of tropical but desert island hut. One of the main changes is I moved this screen. The screen used to be behind us and uh, I wanted to incorporate it into the new design, but you can see here that it was like, it was right in that hole right there that would just be too close to the new tiles. So I have to figure out how to solve this issue right here still. It's like kind of an, a weird, it's a weird mess. As we go along here, this bamboo thing is also something that I won from the Oceanic Arts auctions. I really wanted to put that outside, like up in this thing. Let me come back out here again. Like right up here. But you know, if it was outside all the time, it would get so destroyed. So uh, it lives in here, but I love it in here. It just kind of adds another layer of texture. This is also brand new. Well, new-ish, this little uh, hut, like foliage thing. <laughs> what do you call that? Lahala? No, you know. But the idea is that this is the bar out here, and then you come in here and like, it's a grass hut because you look up and there's a grass ceiling. And then this is the dining area of the grass hut. And then of course the grass hut has nautical elements. In my mind, it's kind of like if somebody would have gotten shipwrecked, they probably would have used the things that they had on their boat to create their new space. So we have the window here that looks out to uh, neighboring islanders. <laughs> and then all of this stuff here, some lanterns that are lit. And I just hung that one today, so that one's not lit yet. And then, um, a tiki that I, the second tiki that I ever carved is this guy right here, this big tall guy. And Sparky's checking it out too. Now, a lot of this stuff was covered in the first video. So if you wanna go back and watch that first video, you can see the stories of a lot of this stuff. But a lot of this was just from different estate sales. You know, I was very fortunate to get a lot of authentic vintage stuff. Oh, this is something I made recently. Let me come over onto the good side of the light here. I always saw something like this in the Book of Tiki. So I was like, oh dude, I gotta, I gotta make one of those things. So I started saving up my plantation bottles and I found a bunch of these corks online. eBay is where I got these corks. You know, you cut a hole through this side of the bottle and then run a rope through there, tie some knots, put the cork through and, and tie it up in the top here. And that was like the whole thing. So I think it came out pretty cool. And uh, it was one of those things that I always wanted to do. I just never got around to it. And I finally made the time to do it. 
So I guess we can just go around and talk about kind of the different stuff here in the breezeway. And uh, you know, a lot of it was in the other video, the other tour video. But uh, since a lot of people have, probably haven't seen that yet, I'll just go ahead and talk about some of these things again. This tiki was carved by Leroy Schmaltz. A private collector reached out to me and said, uh, I know you collect this stuff, would you like to buy that? And I said, yes, please. <laughs> Tiki's like this now are going for, well, in the auction, I don't know, $12,000. <laughs> it was wild. And then the one behind him right there was the old uh, stools from uh, Frankie's Tiki Room in Las Vegas. Some more foliage that I added on the wall there just recently. And then, you know, speaking of Oceanic Arts, it's so funny because during those auctions that were going on, uh, a lot of my, my things that I own kept popping up, like this mask right here. And this mask is just like a normal mask, but it's all hand painted by Leroy Schmaltz. And if you aren't familiar with who Leroy Schmaltz is, he's the guy who basically carved all the, all the tiki's, or at least the majority of the tiki's for tiki bars in the 50s and 60s, and really until his death recently. But he and his partner, Bob Van Oosting, were also the guys who outfitted the uh, Adventureland in Disneyland originally. And then the stuff that really caught my attention during those auctions were the things called master patterns, where they would carve they would carve one of these masks and then they would use it to copy carve off of, put it into a machine, and then it would uh, basically do the, the work more or less for them. Uh, these behind the, the bar here are all master patterns. And uh, I've had people in the past go, dude, you don't know what you're talking about. And uh, if you look at the backs of these things, they have all the mounting stuff for master patterns and uh, yeah, pretty wild stuff. And I got them in a state sale for almost nothing. So even this guy right here, this uh, grumpy coup. <laughs> Some of the stuff that I've added since our last Breezeway tour video, Bamboo Ben gave me that cork eye skull guy, cork eye skull guy, and then a vintage Chinese rice wine bottle that somebody tipped me off to that uh, Don the Beachcomber had on his back bar. And then there's a Chinese ginger jar there. Same thing, they had those in the, their back bars in the 40s and 50s. And then there's a little one right there. There's the Sunkiss squeezer that they used at Trader Vic's for years and years. And of course, <laughs> you know the ice bucket. Oh, one of the other main things that I've done in the breezeway since the last video was I built this table. I always wanted a ship's wheel table that I could display my collectibles in. And I had this base, this bamboo, faux bamboo base from a uh, mid-century piece of uh, uh, patio furniture. I was like, oh, that's perfect. So I built the table and then filled up the bottom with resin and automotive metal flake. And that's how you get that kind of shimmery look on the bottom there. I have it all kind of by section. So there's like things called the Contiki. <laughs> so not necessarily all Stephen Crane stuff, but Contiki stuff. And then right here, Don the Beachcomber stuff. And then Damon's and the Islander in Stockton, California. I don't know why they're together, but you know, whatever. Uh, Sam Seafood, my beloved Sam Seafood right here in uh, Sunset Beach. And then this is all Trader Vic's stuff. Pacific Seas from Clifton's. And then over here, Tahitian stuff. And the castaways. Sorry about my shadow there, but it kind of can't really do anything about it. And then the Mai Kai and Venus, which was a lounge in Las Vegas that Shag designed. And in the center there, you got Tonga Lay in Malibu. And then right here, you have the Breezeway cocktail hour matches and a brand new piece of merch that we haven't released yet. Club 33, when they were doing their tiki thing in Kona, Hawaii. Shangri-La, Coco Palms, Tiki Hut, all kinds of matchbooks that I've collected. Kahiki, Chin Tiki in Detroit. Kowloon in Massachusetts, and then some more Trader Vic stuff. And then as we continue around here, looks like more Pacific Seas, and then some stuff from Laguna Beach, the Royal Hawaiian. These chairs are all from Don the Beachcomber in Sunset Beach. And then recently, I came up on these two guys. And uh, they say that these guys were both from Tiki Bars, and there's holes drilled in the side of the heads of the other, there's like, three or four more of these things out there. I only bought these two, but the other ones were used for uh, like a railing or something. So if anybody has any information about these tiki's, it's kind of a mystery as to where they're from. And, uh, but it was supposed to be like a commercial tiki bar. And then over on this door right here is a 
Papua New Guinea mask carved by Leroy Schmaltz. It's the same kind of mask that they used for the Trader Vix logo. It's flanked by two nautical lights that I got in a state sale. Here is one of the three different water features that we have in the breezeway, as well as some nautical things like barrels and crate lamps that I built. A lamp right there. Tahitian drum lamp that I made. This big shell light that I made. And then that lamp right back there is from Oceanic Arts. And then I made this guy right here as well as this one, which was a bit of a nod to an Orchids of Hawaii lamp. And here's another lamp that I built with that inset resin there. A lobster trap lamp and some chunk lamps up in front that I made. A fish trap lamp. And then this barrel from the Bahuka and Rosemead. It was like their most famous kind of lamps that they had there. Everybody, everybody revered that place, man. It was such a... Such a shame that it, it had to go away. It's a big shell lamp from, God, what's that stuff called? It's, I have one here too. This was out of an estate sale and I forget the name of that, that shell material, but it popped up in a lot of vintage tiki bars. And this one was out of Sam's Seafood in Sunset Beach. A couple more puffer fish hiding back here. Oh, just one, I guess I moved the other one. And then there's this wall of masks and some more Whitco stuff. That goes out into the street there, so um, during the day you can see through it, but um, at night it's real nice. It's kind of a privacy screen. Oh, these are some extra jade tiles that I have. I don't know what to do with them because a lot of them have been cracked and kind of repaired, but I don't know if they're good enough to put up as is, so maybe I'll end up selling them. If anybody's looking for those things, shoot me a DM. And then here is my Whitco bar right here. On the bar sits some big vintage Bacardi bottles. I think it's Bacardi. Hmm. Grand Premio? Premio? Barcelona? That might be wine, but I believe, yeah, this one says Bacardi. See? And then there's a little mini Chimiana, Chimiana, Chimiana? <laughs> from, from, by Shag from Tiki Farm. Of course, some Chinese lantern garnishes from our friends at the Contigo Tiki Bar. A mug that was a gift to the breezeway, as well as a skull and a vintage speaker. I like to put a Bluetooth speaker inside that, and then when you listen to music out here, people think that it's actually coming from that vintage thing. And there's like this goofy tiki back here. I don't, I don't know what the story is with this guy, but he always kind of like, it's kind of weird. Kind of a weird smiley dude. That's a Papua New Guinea mask that I carved and painted. And then, let's see here, some more booze bottles hanging. There's a drum up there, some bongos. And there's like a whole row of bugs up there that uh, I like to keep up there. They're not super valuable, but they uh, do a good job of decorating the place. And uh, one of the first really cool tiki's that I got, this uh, tourist, like, coup. And then there's a Marquesan guy there. And then there's a dude here. And then if you look over here, his buddy's like right there. And my Trader Vix trading license. It's like uh, they, they would give it to you if you bought a certain amount of booze. And on that one, it says that they bought one dozen whiskey sours <laughs> in 1948. They really knew how to drink back then, didn't they? I'd like 12 whiskey sours, please. This is one of my favorite tiki's right here. This guy, this uh, Papua New Guinea guy. And then right behind him is a tiki that I carved years ago. Kind of peeking out of the jungle there. That's another thing I, and I think I said it before, but fake foliage really adds so much to your home tiki bar, as well as these nautical touches like, you know, blocks and cleats and, um, you know, rope knots. What do they call those things? Monkey fists or something? And then there's like a vintage bumper back there. Some more Papua New Guinea stuff. And then this is like the one piece of African art that I have in here. And I think that, you know, if you're delicate about how much stuff that you have in there that's not necessarily tiki, I think it, I think it gets by just fine. Up here, a couple of Rapa Nui guys, a man and a woman. As we get into here, there's a shrunken head and uh, tiki back there. Up above, as we look out, there's a puffer fish and a fish float there. And as we look up, you can see kind of how 
All of the layers add to the whole thing. It's layers on layers on layers. That's the trick of a good tiki bar. That's a lamp that I got from a buddy of mine, an old Orchids of Hawaii lamp from the 1960s. And then there's this great Papua New Guinea guy. Look at how big this guy is. Super giant dude. He's gotta be like nine feet tall. But we've talked about him before. Let's talk about this. Look at the trim. So I carved all this trim. You can see there's kind of like a Marquesan face right there. There's his mouth and then his eyes are on either side there. And then it goes into kind of an abstract pattern up here. If you guys are interested in more of this like trim carving or you want like a tutorial on that kind of thing, let me know in the comments below. I'll be sure to address that. Oh, one of the other things that I put in here that I haven't talked about before is this cleat and rope. And now this rope goes up to there and then right across. So when you, okay, let me just show you. When you go and unravel this thing, down comes the mounting guy for the light system that I need to use for the show. Gets the lights off the ground. You don't need light stands that get in the way down here. Declutters the whole area. But, okay, so real quick, let me show you how I set that up because I wanna go back to the main bar. I wanna show you brand new merch stuff that we have available commemorating the Breezeway remodel. There's two things, very exciting stuff that we've never, well, one of them we've never done before. The other one is really cool art. So um, let me set that up real quick. And then if you stay to the very end, I'll show you the Breezeway volcano. Like a real volcano, well, not a real volcano, but it's like, it's a whole thing, you'll see. Woo, there we go, and then I just pull it to the side so it's a little bit of a off-center thing. And then from my days as a young lad sailing the seas of the Newport Harbor, we just cleat it like this. I still kind of know how to do that. Okay. So to commemorate the finishing, the finishing, I mean, a good tiki bar is never really finished. But to commemorate the Breezeway remodel, we did brand new Breezeway cocktail hour glasses. Check that out. Designed and illustrated by Larissa Pinup Art. If you start over here, there's a beautiful pinup girl hanging out right outside of the Breezeway. There's the brand new Breezeway with a facade from Don the Beachcomber. And as you come around, there's Sparky, like a tiny little Sparky right there. And of course it says Aloha from the Breezeway, home of Spike's Breezeway cocktail hour where we make a zillion different cocktails for the like, last two years, tiki specific. And then as you come around, there's the Breezeway Volcano with the tiki and the waterfalls and stuff. We will see that right after this, but I wanted to make this special cocktail and say cheers. Thanks for being part of the Breezeway Cocktail Hour family. God, that's a good drink. Woo, man. And if you watch the videos on this channel, I'll teach you how to make cocktails, phenomenal cocktails, just like this week after week after week. There's like 130 something videos. Yeah. But that is not the only thing that we are releasing tonight. This was an episode where I was like, oh, cool, I can do a tour. I'm not gonna drink anything, you know? And then I was like, uh-oh, I need to make another one. Now, the reason I brought this one out, this is a glass that we did previously, another one of Larissa Pinup Art's artwork in the same colors as the brand new design. So if you have this one, you can't miss out and not get this one. They sit very well together. The reason I brought out the zombie glass is because we did, where'd they go? The hell'd they go? Oh, over here. Breezeway cocktail hour swizzles. Dude, look at these things. We did four different colors. I'm so excited to show you guys this because I've, I've been sitting on these for like a month now. It has one of Larissa's trademark pinup girls there with uh, you know some palm trees and stuff. It says, Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour on the swizzle stick. There is a little nudity, so if you're offended by that, then this isn't for you. But also, Tiki's not for you then, I don't think. <laughs> and then at the very bottom is the mask from right there. The mask that we talked about that Leroy Schmoltz carved and that I used on the first version of the Breezeway Cocktail Hour glasses. It's rad. It has uh, Tiki down here, Chick up here. Now the reason I got this glass out is to demonstrate a feature of this swizzle stick that I've never seen in any other tiki bar item, tiki thing before. 
Ta-da! She sits on the edge of the glass. Dude, I have never seen, I've never seen another swizzle stick do that before in my life. And I came up with the idea and I was like, Larissa, can you, uh, can you make that happen? And she's like, yeah, sure, no problem. So that's what we came up with. I don't know how quickly these will sell out, but they come in pink, blue, this kind of like light green color, and of course like a mid-century orange. So there's a link down below that'll instruct you how to purchase a set of these and a set of the glasses. I don't know how long they'll last. Everything in our store sells out every time we release new stuff. So act fast. Okay, you guys wanna see the volcano in the Breezeway Lagoon? Okay, let me come around and grab you again. Mm, not like that, but you know what I mean. Okay. So I guess that's the end of the Breezeway Tour Part 2. If you want to go back and watch the original tour, I really go into depth about every single thing in the Breezeway, like all of the tiki's, all of the art. It's like really long, but uh, for historical context, for historical reasons, for historical purpose, I think it's really good. God, this is heavy. Oh my God, I, I never do this. I'm not a vlogger. Okay, and as we come out, we are going to be greeted with the Breezeway hot tub, 50 something panels that I carved by hand, well with a router. And then this is the Breezeway Lagoon. Look at that in all of its majesty. Dug this thing myself, well with a buddy, but then I built this whole thing right here with the tiki and the shells all myself. It was uh, more work than I ever thought it would be, but it was a million estate sales that finally got me those shells and I always knew what I wanted to do with them. It was just like when and where. So that's a bit of a tribute to my dog, Astro. I call it Astro Falls in memory of the late great miniature pincher. But we're here for the volcano. So there's the volcano and that's how it erupts every night. It's just a, uh, a fountain. And if you wanna know more about the Breezeway Lagoon and how I constructed it, go ahead and leave a message in the comments below. I'll consider doing an episode on it. Okay. Let me see if I can flip this thing around. Oh, that's too close. Okay, folks, if you enjoyed this, please be sure to hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. It's free. And if you don't hit the subscribe button, drinks are on you.